Hey, my friends, it's Tom with Watchman River. Thanks for joining me today. It's another good day the Lord has given us, right? To serve him as we await the pre-tribulation rapture of the church, sitting here in these last days, occupying, not just sitting in a cornfield waiting for the rapture, we're occupying because you know what? There are people that have come to the Lord in the last 24 hours that if the rapture was 24 hours ago, these people wouldn't have been with us. So we're waiting for his perfect timing, right? All right, so I'd probably call this video, Nothing Has Changed, because, you know, Iran still hasn't, uh, although there is a funny story that I got to share with you, but they still haven't retaliated. The world is still waiting. I got a feeling it's the retaliation that isn't really coming, but we'll talk about that. Um yeah, so it's a slower day today, and I'm kind of enjoying it because I just want to kind of read some scripture and hang out. I feel like we all just kind of hang out together waiting for that pre-tribulation rapture, and I like that, you know. Um, let us go to some scripture. We're going to share some rapture verses because that's what I'm inclined to do today such a good day, man. Today's a good day. I don't know. I've got, I just feel like the Lord has something really good to say today. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 51 and 52. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. You're getting a new body. If you belong to the Lord Jesus and you believe in his atoning blood and his finished work, you're about to get a new body that's fitted for eternity just for you. Mine's going to have long, golden, flowing hair. I've told you this before. I've decided I'm tired of the bald thing. And so I talked to the Lord and I said, hey, you know, when I had hair, I was a brunette. Maybe I want long, golden, flowing hair. And he said, all right, Tom, if you want that, you can have that. He didn't really say that. That's humor. But I'm expecting long, golden, flowing hair. And I've told you before, it's going to end up looking ridiculous on me. It's going to be like one of those little wooden dolls with the click-on yellow hair. Or something. <laughs> I'm going to look like a just a crazy dude for eternity. Because the Lord's like, you teased about it so much. So here's your hair. <laughs> All right, let's go to, sorry, let's go to First Thessalonians chapter 4 verses 16 through 18. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first, and then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up, that's raptured, shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and thus we shall always be with the Lord, therefore comfort one another with these words. How comforting are those words to you? Every time I read it, I'm comforted by it because we're watching the shadows of the seven-year tribulation descend upon this world. And we know that seven-year tribulation could start at any time. But Paul writes this letter telling us, comfort each other with these words. We're meeting him in the air. It doesn't, this is not talking about the second coming of Christ. Because it says, and thus we shall always be with the Lord. And previous to that, it says, to meet the Lord in the air. Hey, how do you like these birdies hanging out? So this is, I, I'm so comforted by these words. It's beautiful. Let's go to John 14, 1 through 3. These, oh man, these three verses. I love them. Let not, these are the words of Jesus. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. He's coming to receive us unto himself. He didn't say, I'll come and dwell with you down there. It's beautiful. And he's been preparing a place for us for 2,000 years. Can you imagine? What is that going to be like? We always put earthly, we always look at things from an earthly mindset. 
we're like, oh, it says mansions or dwelling places, and we picture some big house on the hill, mansion, and I just think we're 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 using our limited, very very limited knowledge and thinking those kind of things. I think the dwelling place is going to be far more magnificent than anything you can picture. And I can't wait. Oh, we have a great future. When you know what Jesus did for you, that he paid for our sins with his blood and you put your faith and hope and trust and belief in our King, you have a future that we can't find words. It's just, I can't wait. <laughs> I just can't wait. Second Thessalonians verse, uh, chapter 2 verse 7 and 8. For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains, that's the Holy Spirit in us, will do so until he is taken out of the way. And then the lawless one will be revealed. That's the Antichrist. Whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and the, destroy with the brightness of his coming. That's the second coming of Christ when he destroys the Antichrist. This, you guys know, I love this one. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 2 through 6. This is the one I always tell you guys that people start reading it and they stop. <laughs> and then they build a whole campaign around it. Nobody knows when the Lord is coming. He comes as a thief in the night. It's like, to the unbelievers he does. But let's read it. For you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so comes as a thief in the night. And that's where they stop reading. <laughs> for when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them. As, and all this them, this is the non-believers, comes upon them as labor pains upon a pregnant woman, and they shall not escape. But you, brethren, are not in darkness, so that this day should overtake you as a thief. You are all sons of the light and sons of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as others do, but let us watch and be sober. So when people tell you, stop looking for Jesus to come back, why do you do this? Therefore, let us not sleep as others do, the non-believers, but let us watch and be sober. Let's take a serious watch. And that's what we do. We're watching and we're comforting each other with great words. Our blessed hope, our Titus 2.13, we're waiting for the appearing of our blessed hope. Our Savior, Jesus, is coming to get us. Man, I'm in, I am enjoying, I got to tell you, I am enjoying the beginning of this video because there's not a ton of news. So I'm just in a relaxed mode. I'm, I'm liking this. Revelation 3.10. I love this one too. Because you have kept my command to persevere, I also will keep you from the hour of trial, which shall come upon the whole world to test those who dwell on the earth. Talk about the seven year tribulation and he's going to keep us from it. We're not appointed to wrath. Isn't that beautiful. Can I read one more? Let's do one more. I love, I love, this is one I never realized was a rapture verse until much later in life. And I truly believe it is Isaiah 26, 19 through 21. Your dead shall live together with my dead body. They shall arise. Awake and sing you who dwell in dust for your dew is like the dew of herbs. And the earth shall cast out the dead. Come, my people, enter your chambers and shut your doors behind you. Hide yourself, as it were, for a little moment until the indignation is past. For behold, the Lord comes out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. The earth will also disclose her blood and will no more cover her slain. Can I get an amen? I heard that. <laughs> Beautiful verses. What a beautiful hope we have. What a beautiful Savior we serve. Jesus is King. He is King. It's a good day. It's a good day. Let's go to look at what's going on. So, Iran, this is from Israel today, early this morning. Iran has reportedly joined its Houthi proxies in maritime pirate in maritime piracy by seizing the container ship MC MSC Ares in the Strait of Hormuz. The Ares was en route from the United Arab Emirates to India. So 
And it says uh, Iranian militants took over a Portuguese ship called the MCS Ares near the Strait of Hormuz. And this is a ship that is partially owned, partially owned by a Jewish businessman. So that was enough for them to, for Iran to join the Houthis and uh, get hold of this ship. So listen to this. This this is just, I don't know if this is true. I can't verify this yet. This was right before I hit record. So keep that in mind. This is from Israel Today. Iran confirms that it forced, that its forces hijacked or uh, the container ship MSC. One report said MSC, one said MCS. Don't know which one it is. Aries in the Strait of Hormuz a short time ago. The first images of the act of the piracy can be seen. I saw some images of it. Iran claims the ship belongs to the Zionist regime. This is the interesting part right here that I can't confirm yet. According to an unconfirmed Saudi report, there's humor in this, so listen up. Iranian officials are saying this is the much feared response to Israel's assassination of top Iranian uh, generals in Damascus. So according to unconfirmed Saudi reports, this, <laughs> this is their response to what happened in Syria at the consulate last week, a week and a half ago or so. And you know what? It could be. I told you yesterday. I don't think their response. I think it's going to be pretty timid. The whole world is waiting for like nukes, but I don't think that's going to happen. I don't think that's going to happen. I think that's Ezekiel 38 war. And I think that happens after the rapture. But just so interesting, it is almost humorous. If they, I can't imagine the Arab world accepting this. Can you? Can you imagine the Arab world going, wait a minute, you took a ship, a container ship? That was your response for having some pretty big, pretty big, big wigs in the uh, IRGC taken care of by Israel? This is your response? Uh, we'll see. We'll see. Last night, there was a barrage of rockets that came from Lebanon and they went into northern Israel and so many people were reporting it like, here it is, here it is, well, you know. It was kind of a normal thing that's been going on. This is from the Times of Israel. Hezbollah launches explosive-laden drones and dozens of rockets at northern Israel. Lebanon's Hezbollah terror group fired a large barrage of rockets at northern Israel on Friday night, last night. As the country braces for an expected retaliatory attack by Iran or its proxies to an alleged Israeli strike in Syria that killed several Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps members. The military said around 40 rockets. There were some reports in other sources that said 50 rockets. They were launched, some of which were intercepted, while others impacted open areas or fell short into Lebanon. So there you go. This is from Israel Today. Has Iran been deterred by the level of preparedness in Israel? By the deployment of additional U.S. military assets? By the fact that it doesn't have the element of surprise or something else? Everyone was certain an Iranian attack would happen yesterday. Yeah, nothing happened. So far, it's, you know, one o'clock, something like that in Israel today. So far, nothing's happened today. Just interesting. Something in Israel happened very, very sad yesterday. Um, I didn't cover it because it was just breaking before I hit record and I couldn't verify it at all. But the there was a little shepherd boy. He was tending the flock. I mean, I sound like I'm telling you a Bible story. 14-year-old um, boy, little boy named Benjamin, and uh, they killed him. The, says Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu says that Benjamin Akamir, 14 years old, was murdered. And he vowed that Palestinians who committed this heinous crime will pay. Uh, Bibi urged local Jewish residents in Samaria to let Israeli security forces handle the matter. There have been ongoing violent clashes between Palestinian mobs and large groups of Jewish settlers searching for the boy. So he was missing yesterday morning and the Jewish settlers were searching for him. And the Palestinians were, some of them were shooting and throwing rocks at the people looking for this missing boy. And uh, he went missing early Friday morning while shepherding his flock of sheep, north, just north of Jerusalem. And uh, just, just terrible, terrible. Um, according to right before I hit record, 
it said the initial investigation indicates that that little boy was stoned to death by two to three terrorists. What are you going to do? Pray for those people over there. All the people. All the people. The Irish Prime Minister were close to formally recognizing a Palestinian state. How beautiful. Ireland is close to formally recognizing a Palestinian state and would like to do so in concert with Spain and other like-minded countries. Its new Prime Minister, Simon Harris, said on Friday after meeting his Spanish counterpart, Pedro Sanchez, reported in the Reuters news agency. So there you go. Everyone wants to recognize a Palestinian state. God is going to step into this war. At some point, God is going to step in. Rapture is going to happen and sudden destruction is going to come. But at the hands of God, I really believe it. And I think it's very, very soon. All right, earthquakes went back up to there. Around the normal range we seem to talk about, 41 in the last 24 hours, over 4.0. Six of those over 5.0. Yesterday was that weird day where there was one over 5.0 in a 24 hour period, but there were six over 5.0. What else? Even the, even believe, you guys won't believe this. Even Clown World News was slow today. I was looking different stories and nothing was that interesting. This is sad. This is, uh, Haiti's got this terrible thing going on. It's a total crisis over there. But 95,000 people have fled the Haitian capital in a month, said the UN. Um, they have fled rampant gang violence in the Haitian capital, Port-au-Prince, since early March. Insecurity is pushing more and more people to leave the capital to find refuge in provinces, taking the risk of passing through gang-controlled routes. Terrible what's going on there. Haiti is grappling with a wave of violence by powerful gangs that intensified in late February as they sought to oust the Prime Minister, Ariel Henry, who announced last month that he would step down to allow the for formation of an interim government. But delays in that process are meaning violence and food shortages, a lack of medicine. They're still blighting the impoverished Caribbean nation. Pray for those poor people over there. Oh, my goodness. All right, what's going on in America? You know, I look at this stuff and I, I can't help it. For two years, I've been looking at too many stories. I always I always jump to it's intentional before I jump to it's, it's accidental. And it's only because so many crazy things have happened the past two years, and they're increasing. So I see this, and it's just like, how does that happen? But, but anyway, it's, and it's happened before, but this is a big one. Breaking 26 barges, damaged bridges, and a dam on the Ohio River. Over two dozen barges have broken loose of their moorings on the Ohio River and floated downstream, causing local authorities to shut down multiple bridges, including the McKees Rocks Bridge in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. There is widespread traffic disruption in the area. It's reported that 23 of the barges were loaded and three were empty. Six barges are claimed to have run up against the Emsworth Dam and extensive damage has been reported at Peggy's Harbor in Pittsburgh. Somebody trying to destroy our country? I happen to believe, honestly, I think a lot of it's intentional. Not always, you know, but some a story like this is too fishy. Like, why is everything hitting into bridges all of a sudden? You know, I don't know. All right, so <laughs> I'm very laid back today. I'm very laid back today. Let's do a couple testimonies, all right? Let's do that. Samantha, I have always believed and I've always had faith. My mom made sure we knew him. I was lost to this world for about 20 years. And he started speaking to my heart about six years ago. Though I am yet a sinner, I am his. The Lord Jesus is my everything. Amen. Sam, thank you. Wildflower. As a child, I always felt that he was with me. And at 16 years old, I was given a Bible pamphlet with a little picture of the cross as a bridge to God. And that's what did it. This, this 
I don't know if it's a male or a female. They got saved by a tract. That's what did it. The little cartoons that showed me my sin was washed and that I was new in him changed my life. Still going strong 20 plus years later, those little pictures gave my eyes what my soul needed to see the simple words and he saved my life. How beautiful is that? That's why I, t I tell people, if you're shy and you can't share the gospel, you can get Bible tracts really cheap online, really cheap. You just leave some of those around. This person was saved by somebody leaving a Bible tract. Incredible. All right. Comments of the day. Deidre. Jesus never promised life would be pain-free. He did promise if you abide in him and believe in his shed blood, he will give you everlasting and eternal life. Praise the Lamb of God. Amen, Deidre. Thank you. Yeah. We abide in him. We abide in him. Shauna. OMG, Tom. I can relate. When I was 16... Oh, this is from yesterday. I was telling this story about how when my mom and dad hit about 55 years old, they suddenly couldn't remember very simple things. I call it gastular brain event. People have a lot of names for it. But she said, OMG, Tom, I can relate. When I was 16, I asked my dad, how old are you? He said, 42. I said, man, you're old. Then he replied, I was once 16. I was puzzled. Then I got older and totally understood what he meant. <laughs> I love that, Shauna. So true. So true. There's All of us have stories about looking at somebody and thinking, man, you're so old. I'll never be that old. And then you get that old. And then you get much older than that old. <laughs> I, I still remember uh, we had a little surprise birthday party for my dad when he turned 50 years old in the basement of our church. Church people love my dad. And so we had this little surprise 50th birthday party. And I remember looking at my brother. So I was like 20. And I was like, can you believe dad is 50 years old? And me and my brother was just like, he's so old. He's so old. <laughs> and I thought 50 was really old till I hit about 45. <laughs> anyway. Ange. Just when I start to get impatient for the rapture, I remember 2020. If you had all gone then, if you had all gone then, I would still be here. It's his will that none should perish. This is his will be done, not mine. Amen, Ange. Just what I was talking about earlier. If we had our way, it would be like, today, Lord, come today. But there will be people that come to him up to the moment of the rapture that are our forever brothers and sisters. And we want, we want all the ones Jesus wants. So we wait for his perfect timing. But we are in the last days, let me tell you that. Aaron, yes, to the commenter who said, is anyone else crying all the time? Me, I hardly ever pray to Jesus without crying. It's even more so when I think of my loved ones possibly being here for the tribulation. Yeah, I get that. I get that. It is time to be, you got to make sure you leave stuff behind for the people that love you that don't know the Lord because they're going to be rifling through your stuff. You got to leave letters and Bibles and anything you can to share the good news and tell them what's coming. And Diana, amen. Come, Jesus, have mercy upon the unbelievers. Drench the Holy Spirit upon the unbelievers in the precious name of Jesus. I got to tell you, I like that a lot. Drench the Holy Spirit upon the unbelievers. I need to be drenched in the Holy Spirit every day, don't you? I ask the Lord every day, fill me afresh with your spirit every day. Give me that fullness. Fill me to capacity with your beautiful spirit. Because if any of you guys like anything about me, it's just the Holy Spirit. That's all it is. Without the Holy Spirit, I am not a likable person. I'll tell you that. But you know what? Once you get that indwelling Holy Spirit, your life should never be the same, ever, ever. And how you get that spirit is just by belief. It's the only way. Jesus came here 
See, I always think about the people before Jesus was here. Before the day of Pentecost. That just didn't have... How do you live life without the Holy Spirit? It, it makes me just... We have this such an incredible gift, the Comforter, the Holy Spirit. But anyway, Jesus came here 2,000 years ago. And he came here to fix the sin problem because we're all sinners. We're all sinners. Nobody has ever walked this earth without sin except the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. The one who was 100% God and 100% man in the same body. And that's Jesus. He's the only one who fulfilled the law, the perfect law. And he fulfilled it perfectly. And he's the only one. Nobody else has even gotten close. And the closer you think you are to being perfect, you're probably farther away than you could ever imagine from being perfect because you got pride issues. You know, we can't be, we can't do, we fall short of the glory of God. We can't even come, we can't even come close to his expectations because God's expectations are perfect. And that's why he sent Jesus because we can't be perfect. And that's why Jesus walked perfectly, the perfect lamb of God, the one who fulfilled the law perfectly, the one whose blood was shed and washes us white as snow perfectly. It's all of him. He's our perfection. We can't be perfect. We can't even, man, we're, our performance stinks. I got to tell you, our performance stinks. And to the ones who think, man, no, my performance is pretty good, man. I, I haven't sinned in many years. Oh, man, your performance stinks. I got to tell you. But you know what? Jesus was perfect. He walked the earth perfectly. He was humble, loving beyond measure, healing everyone. Turning a small amount of loaves and fishes into an amount through miraculous ways to feed many thousands of people. I like that one. I bet you, I, I bet you, if you could, this is just speculation. I bet you if you could taste that bread and those fish before Jesus multiplied it, I bet you it was even better when he multiplied it. That's just a theory I have. But I love fish and I love bread. So, man, you know, <laughs> I love Jesus' food miracles. But he did all that. And why did he do that? He did it because he loves you. Jesus loves you. Jesus wants to spend eternity with you. So he came here, the Lamb of God, the, the, Lamb, the Lamb of God, the Lamb of God. He came here to die for your sins. He came here to shed blood because without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. So he came here and he shed perfect blood. He shed the once and for all blood. Jesus' blood is so powerful that you could pile up every sin that every person has ever committed. And if those were all pushed into the blood, they would all be washed away. He paid for every sin. He knew he was coming here to pay for sin. He knew he was coming here, the Lamb of God, to be nailed to the cross, to shed his own blood. He was taking care of the sin problem. The King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, who spoke and nothing became everything, he created everything, is also the same one who came here to pay for your sins with his blood. So amazing. So amazing. But when you hear this, you have a choice. You can either say, yeah, Jesus, I am a sinner and I, I have faith in your blood that it washes me white as snow. I have faith that you took care of every sin that was ever committed. So I am committing my sin to your blood. I'm having faith in your blood and I'm being washed white as snow. And I believe in your finished work that you went to the cross and you died and you were buried and you rose again the third day. Jesus, I believe in your blood. Jesus, I believe in your finished work. When you do that, you're saved. You're born again. God will put his Holy Spirit in you. He'll seal you until the day of redemption. He'll never let you out of the palm of his hand. Or you can hear the message I just said and just say, nah, that's not for me. It's not for me. At which point you will face Jesus on judgment day because there's no opt out button. You'll face him on judgment day and he'll look at you and you'll know your sin is still with you. And you're, you'll know I'm standing or kneeling before the one who paid for my sins. And I said, no, 
and he'll say away from me, I never knew you. And you'll be eternally separated from God. And I don't know exactly what that means. I don't want to know. Hell is described as weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. Very hot. I just can't imagine. I wouldn't want anyone to go there. There's no one, no one, no one I've ever met that I would want to go there. So, You know, you have a decision to make when you hear this. You heard the gospel, the good news, that you're saved by grace, an unearned gift, through faith in Christ Jesus and what he did. And now the decision is yours. Choose wisely. Okay? All right. I'm going to shut the camera off now, and I'm going to say a prayer for every person who watched this video. And if we're not raptured today, and you know what? Today is a perfectly good day for the rapture. But if we're not, God willing, I will be here tomorrow for the prayer video. I love you guys.